Are you wasting your time learning DevOps in 2020? Well, you reached the right video. Let me explain. This video was brought to you by Diginic Academy, your number one source to learn how to make money programming and get that six figure salary you desire. Our academy have a wide range of courses, including 3K in 30 days, our mentorship membership program, and much, much more. When you sign up for our free community, you get access to our membership community with like-minded professional who's going to help take your career to the next level. So let's take the first step to get started and really take your career to the next level with our seven step money guide today. So let's go ahead and click the link below to sign up for our free seven step guide to help you get your career started today. All right, guys, if you was anything like me when you first started to see the term DevOps, you always just think immediately programming language first. And it's not a programming language. It's more of a, a process of really shortening the system or software development lifecycle. I'm going to tell you guys a story. Um, I was you guys already know i come from a sql background i started and helped us and worked my way up inside of development even if i even after graduating from computer science and learning coding in in college i still had to start off in help desk and then work my way up well just like anything else guys once you start doing software development and you're trying to figure out hey where, what ways i can provide more value and put myself in a position to get a higher salary so came across this term called called DevOps and um, start reading into it start to see hey there's two sides of it you got the developer side of it and you got the IT operation side of it which is typically the infrastructure side for most companies where you're managing infrastructure and all that I already had experience with the infrastructure side so I felt pretty comfortable with that so I was like man if I already got this experience and I know software development real good I can jump to this and start to make really good money so I was thinking of it as a position and going to my boss and telling them all the benefits were I should have done more research before I did that and had more specific business cases in mind but at that time I was excited just to see new technology just like any other developer and wanted to try it out so obviously I failed it because I didn't go in with specific use cases and business and how it can affect the business and end up just not necessarily going in that route and never did become a DevOps engineer but later on in my career I was able to leverage my skill set and found opportunities where DevOps actually works pretty good in the right environment. So a lot of these environments are agile. You usually have two types of environments. You have the agile um, environments and you have the waterfall. Um, personally, I've worked with both in the past. I prefer the agile just because of the type of companies I work for, but I understand, you know, waterfall actually plays a role in everything else too. Man, it, it never fails when you're actually doing videos. That's when the um, that's when everybody want to text you. But show must go on. But guys, these two different companies that I refer to you about, you got to identify what company you work for. And most of the time with the actual waterfall method, ag the DevOps typically don't work in those environments unless they've made efforts to kind of um, stri um, streamline their uh, system development process. But in agile um, situation or agile system, it works pretty good. That being said, that's why it failed early on in my career because the department that I was working in, the boss I had at the time, they was a waterfall, slow, steady, test, 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 and I'll just make sure it's right on the front end so that they deploy it. It was a long software develop or a software development life cycle. They didn't want any DevOps at all. But later on in my career, when I start working with more agile companies, it makes sense. I could kind of leverage that technology and it was a good fit. Why I tell you guys this, a lot of you guys are gonna see, hey, you know, I can be a DevOps engineer. Let me go talk to my boss about being a DevOps engineer. And your boss is gonna look at you and like, no, we're not gonna go in that route. Don't talk to me about that again. Get back to work. So I don't want you to go through that heartbreak <laughs> of doing it without being able to go to your boss with specific use case on why you should do this 
and how you can benefit and get a raise in the process, guys. So that's why I wanna go over some of these things and really help you guys take things to the next level. I can't cover everything in this video. That's why I tell you guys to go sign up for my seven step guide. I'm building that out continuously and I'm gonna customize that to really get you guys information on why you want to become a DevOps engineer and really put you in a position so that you can win. Uh, that being said, guys, I have some points here I want to make sure I cover so that um, you guys have all the information you need up front so that you can become a DevOps engineer and be able to showcase why the company may need you. <clears throat> First of all, why? If you guys do any software development with your company and you happen to work with um, any uh, soft, uh, system administrators to deploy your code, to test your code, and it takes a while, and it really takes away from the time you can put, push your code to production after you test and all that, perfect opportunity for DevOps guys, especially if you're on the developer side. And the way you po the way you sell this is you go to your system administrator first before you go to your boss. And then you go to your system administrator and say, man, I want to be able to help you guys out. I want to be able to uh, make sure that you guys don't have to get, get involved with this code because I know you guys got important things to do. I want to help you out. Could you deploy this tool that allowed me to actually test the code and automate all of these processes for you so you can do what you like to do best, you know, work with the servers and all that, not necessarily tinker with my code. And that way, if the end user have a problem with the code, I could troubleshoot it from end to end without getting you involved. Most 99% of the uh, system administrators are going to say yes, and you guys go put that in the test environment and test that out. Obviously, in, in, when you have some spare time, don't make sure you take care of your other projects. Make sure you put this in place. As you doing this process, now when you go to uh, who this is going to benefit and um, who is this for, now you, you got to go to your boss and say, okay boss, I was talking to Greg here, Greg the system administrator, and we spent a ton of time just pushing code and going back and forth about the specifics. We got a process in place that's going to help streamline that. We're going to obviously test it out. We want to let you know that we're doing it, and uh, if you have any questions, let us know but I think it's gonna help take our um, processes to develop software to the next level. At that point, your boss is gonna be skeptical, but they just can't say no because it's in the test environment, you're testing it out, it's just not you, it's somebody else. As long as they're gonna say, as long as you get your other work done, you do this in your spare time, I have no problem with it. At this point, you're going to start working with tools, um, Jenkins, Docker, uh, SolarWinds, whatever tools you need to monitor or uh, do the testing or automating, you're going to implement at this point in your test environment, life is good. Then at this point, you should have a good working model in your test environment. You should be able to call the meeting with your team and explain the benefits and all that good stuff like that and be good to go. A lot of you guys may have got lost in this situation, in this discussion, because first of all, I'm the only developer at my <laughs> at my job, which, okay, I understand that. And technically you are in a quote unquote DevOps environment because you pushed it from end to end by yourself. So it really don't apply to you at that point. Or you work for a larger company where you got way more people involved in this and you just can't do it, then you're probably in more of a waterfall method and this doesn't really apply to you. So it's only for certain companies, certain agile style companies is my point I'm trying to make. So um, if you should know based off of what I just said, if this is a good fit for you to learn learn DevOps and to really implement this in your um, in your company. A lot of you guys are just getting started with software development and you see these DevOps jobs out there. DevOps is more of a intermediate advanced level uh, position. Uh, if you are a rock star software developer in the early stages, maybe so, but don't let it be your first job that you apply for you know it's best if you already have some software development knowledge you've been through those and then you're getting into this or on the other side you're a system administrator and you're learning 
software development, you're getting into this at that point. So I would recommend you having one of those skills up front, you experience the nose, and then you get into the DevOps world versus coming in new, trying to learn DevOps, which is still not as clear a uh, concept to everybody on your team, trying to learn that and then learning the operations either from a de uh, system administrator and a developer. That's a lot to learn at the beginning. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend DevOps being a first uh, job opportunity for a lot of people unless they you know the company's gonna actually train you up you got junior DevOps engineers out there you know some companies do it but they're very niche companies who really invest in their technology so it's not gonna be a lot of opportunities there but if they are take advantage of them but don't expect that from most companies guys and as far as just defined roles you have to have defined roles in order for this to work just like I told you guys you got system administrators you got developers and you got a process in place currently you need to be able to say okay this person this defined role is actually gonna push this to production they're gonna do XYZ they check with us make sure the dates are good make sure everything's good in test all that's good communicate that to the end user life is good each role, everybody know what their role is and have it defined throughout that process. If you don't have that in place, it's not gonna be successful. That being said, guys, like, subscribe to the content. If you have additional questions, comment below. Um, I have links below, my seven step guide, and also my um, premium courses. Go check those out. And uh, I have a link here for a seven step guide. It's free. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.